Today we're talking about the Tello EDU drone, a $129 variant of the Tello drone. A really nice entry level drone, allows you to program, allows you to fly in your backyard without too much expense and too much headache. What I really like about this drone, it's got lots of features packed into a small package. It's really simple to fly. It's not gonna do a lot of damage if you fly it in the house. I do highly recommend you fly outside and stick around to the end of the video, I'll tell you why. Uh, what's nice about this camera, it's got a number of different sensors and cameras. It's got a camera up front, uh, this shoots 720p video, five megapixel photos. It also has sensors on the bottom, uh, this actually can do object detection and tracking of what's happening underneath it. Uh, this isn't used for taking photos, but because this little drone doesn't have GPS, it helps it track where it is as it's moving around. So it's looking at the texture or the ground to make sure it knows where it is as it's moving. So these sensors on the bottom allow you to stay put in place without GPS. They're also used with these pads, which are part of the programming of the Tello EDU. They allow you to write little uh, games and little programs to object recognize these pads and be able to move around. You control the drone by hooking it into either your iPhone, Android, iPad, or Macintosh. It has a very simple application to allow you to control the drone, very similar to what's seen in more popular and more expensive drones. And so you hook up the drone to the Wi-Fi of your house that hooks into the Wi-Fi of the drone and you're able to control it. On screen, you can see a video display of what the drone is seeing, and you can record that video and you can take photos directly from your mobile device. In addition to the normal controls where you can go forward and back, you can also get the drone to do flips, either flipping forward or backward, which is a lot of fun. The Tello has four different apps or app experiences, and some of these are much better than others. Uh, the Tello has its normal controller, which you can download from the App Store. It allows you to do basic controls. There's also a Tello EDU application, which has uh, more cartoony games and puzzles for learning basic programming with a programming language called Scratch. And this is a great way to get started in programming. And they really thought through the application experience. It's a little cartoony, so maybe not for everybody, but it is a good starter program for learning to program. If uh, Scratch isn't for you, they also have a variation that's on Swift Playgrounds. And so Swift Playgrounds you can install on your iPad or your Macintosh, and it allows you to go through a number of different puzzles and levels and missions, similarly flying the drone. Uh, one criticism of the Swift application is that it's pre-filled in all the code for you, so there's not too much in terms of puzzles for kids to solve. Uh, you can still program the drone in Swift, and it does show you how that works, but it could use a little more work. The other way you can program your drone is through Python. It's a little more advanced programming language. There's a lot more you can do with it. And when you really take the training wheels off of the drone, you can really get deep into it. There's a lot of applications and a lot of people experimenting with object tracking, artificial intelligence, and really more complex robotics using the Tello drone. So it's a fantastic platform for those looking to learn and looking to get into their very first drone and their first experience in programming. It can also be a great tool for people who are very advanced in artificial intelligence and more complex elements of computer science to really experiment with drones and see what they can do. Had a lot of fun with this drone. I would recommend it for $129. It's a great value. You can have a lot of fun as you're stuck in quarantine. And so now let's get into why you shouldn't fly your drone at home. Um, one of the reasons I don't like to fly drones inside is the very first drone that I had was a DJI Mavic. And uh, one of the things I'd heard is that you can fly it inside. And so I was like, this is so cool. I'll just fly it inside. So I let it take off and um, you know, I hadn't read all the instruction manuals. I didn't know exactly how everything worked. I just figured I'd let it take off and then I'd bring it back down. Well, as soon as it took off, I wasn't really quite sure how to get it to land. And so I put my hand underneath it and the Mavic has sensors to avoid obstacles underneath it. So it started to lift off. 
And so I was like, oh, I guess I can't get it to land that way. So I looked at the remote control on the iPhone app and it had a button that said return to home. And I was like, oh, well, I know it has cameras that face down. I guess I'll just press that button. Um, now, what return to home actually does is it's a feature that's meant to be used outdoors. And when you press return to home outdoors, it goes to a high altitude so it doesn't accidentally knock into a tree when it's returning home. But in this case, I was actually inside my house and it didn't realize that. So as soon as I pressed return to home, the drone shot directly into my ceiling, caused some damage to my ceiling and uh, strained my relationship with my wife because she was screaming at me. Um, so now I don't really recommend flying drones in the house. Uh, but this is a little different, maybe a little bit safer, but just in case, maybe take it outside.